The gentlewoman from Iowa, Ms. Ashney, is now recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you to the witnesses for being here. Chair Gensler, it's great to have you confirmed and have the SEC back at full strength. Uh, it's obvious to everyone, <laughs> yeah, that people uh, trade differently and invest, and it's changed a lot over the last 10 years. And you know what? Contrary to what my colleagues on the other side of the aisle are saying, we believe in that. That's okay. But I do worry about some of the standards and protections for investors um, so that we can keep up with those changes. And recently, I've been very focused throughout this process on how no, new digital platforms have gamified trading and can be designed to influence behaviors within those users. And my husband and I own a digital design firm, so I'm pretty familiar with this. And one of the things I've heard along the way is that we shouldn't take away from some of those fun features of the apps. I don't disagree with that in general. However, uh, at our last hearing, I asked Dr. Vicki Bogan, um, who is an expert in this area, about this, and she said, that app design can absolutely influence the decisions people make while they're using that app. And so in this case, that app design can encourage riskier trading, which is literally the last thing uh, investors with limited knowledge need. So Chair Gensler, what I'm wondering, is that something that the SEC will look at in evaluating whether the current regulatory structures are doing enough uh, to protect investors against gamification towards riskier behavior? Um, uh, yes, Congresswoman, and I look forward to working with you. I think what we found in our modern internet age is that uh, service providers outside of finance figured out how to basically uh, in engage us in a more fun app and make uh, the user experience uh, more enjoyable. Bringing that to finance, that can be good because it's easier to use the app but it also can lead to high trading activity. And that high trading activity is really important. Tie that with predictive data analytics, some fancy words like deep learning and machine learning, but tie that to predictive data analytics, then they can say to Gary Gensler, this is the prompt you're gonna get. And they can send, say to Chair Waters, this is the prompt she's gonna get. And then they figure out the computers figure out how to market to us differently. And all of a sudden it becomes somewhat potentially behaviorally addictive. And you start to find that, that your returns go down. So I think it's a very important thing we're putting out to public comment to, to find from the public uh, more about this area. I think it's best to get ahead of it than rather five years from now, look back and say uh, some problems have occurred. That Listen, that's music to my ears, and thank you so much. We'll continue to, to work with this. Um, also in this committee, we've looked a lot at the industries who have a business model where people aren't actually the customer of the service that they count on. So from student loans to credit reporting servicers, we consistently hear from those, you know, about those businesses where we've got a lot of complaints from consumers. So Chair Gensler, since it's pretty clear um, that this is a similar situation, they're not the same, you know, the, the customer really is, uh, you know, Robinhood selling to the, the, the marketplace, the vendor, so not the, the consumer itself. I wanna, you know, we've got a clear interest of conflict here when it comes to pay for order flow. And one of the things that pr is pretty clear from both news coverage and from these hearings is that this business uh, with this is much of a conflict here. We don't have enough transparency around the PFOF, both for public and for policymakers to even understand. And I've had back and forth with Robin Hood's CEO on this, and he said he'd send us that information uh, for the PFOF. Uh, we're still, of course, waiting to see that since those currently aren't covered by Rule 606. So. Chair Gensler, I'm wondering if that's something that you would consider including in updating those rules and you know, what are some other options that we can look at to address this conflict? I, I, I have asked staff to consider what should we do in terms of broad market structure, payment for order flow, and I would add the data is very valuable. I mean, what we find in our online life, if we're not paying, if we're, it's a free commission, it's often that somebody else is getting data. In this case, the data is the actual transaction flow. That data is very valuable to the wholesaler, the, the internalizer who's taking that order flow. And then, is, as we heard, maybe 50% of the retail flow, then they have a data advantage against all the other market makers. Uh, like 
like a search engine that has data advantages against all other uh, online platforms. Yeah, listen, I can't wait to work with you on this. And I, I'll tell you what, I'm worried uh, while we all want people, of course, to be able to save and invest equitably, that what we've got right now could exacerbate inequity. So grateful to hear what you have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. The gentleman from West Virginia.